Hi, welcome to the Mayor's Table. I'm City of Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett, and we are out here today at the Bistai Dena Zen Wilderness Area mm -hmm. with my friend Sherry Landon with the Bureau of Land Management. And this is kind of Sherry's playground. Yes. So we wanted to offer our audience the opportunity to find places right here near our city where we can go out and explore in places maybe people haven't done before. Yes. And we brought the expert with us today. <laughs> So Sherry, thanks for joining us out here, and we're going to go on a little field trip uh, out towards the Dana Zen area. So we're here on the east side of the Bistai Wilderness, correct? Yes. And they call this the Dana Zen. Dana Zen. Um, yes. And we're, we're 12 miles essentially off of 550. But mm -hmm. what is the difference between this area of of the Bistai Wilderness versus the other side? The Dana Zen side has exposures of uh, where the nascent or the early mammals existed, and then down below that you'll get into the KT boundary and below that the life of the dinosaurs. So at this end you get to see a variety, a little different geology than you see down on the, the Vista end. Okay. And a lot of good petrified wood up at this end, a lot of big logs. Uh, so it's a different geological story at this end versus the uh, Bistai end. Well, I got to tell you, I hope that throughout this little field trip we're on, we get as much information as I got riding up here with Sherry <laughs> today uh, and telling us a little bit about the boundary uh, mm -hmm. of the event that actually ended the dinosaurs. Yes, yes. the KT boundary, which is the boundary between the Cretaceous, which was when the dinosaurs were alive, and then you had the big impact and it was the demise of the dinosaur and then kind of the explosion of the mammals. And we have an exposure of the KT boundary here, which is rare. It's, it is not exposed in many places throughout the world. Awesome. And so you can come here and you can start on top in the, the age of the mammal and literally walk through the KT boundary. You can put one leg on the Cretaceous and one leg on the Paleocene. I mean, it's real rare and it's really a neat exposure. The exposure here uh, just really indicates the, the tectonics, the earthquakes, the turmoil at, right, immediately after the impact. Well, I'm giddy like a schoolboy right now with the opportunity to go out here and explore this today. We hope our audience enjoys this as well. So we're gonna go hit the trail and bring you along with us. Let's go, Sherry. Okay. We made a little stop here to kind of talk about some areas and Sherry, you were telling me, what do you love most about the Bistai area? What is something that somebody who's never been out here before, what are they, what are they going to find? What's, what's the big, what's the big deal? Yeah, I think the Bistai and Dana is in, is so unique for a wilderness area. You've got outstanding geology. You've got museum quality fossils. You've, you know, you've got dinosaurs, you have mammals. Um, it, it will give an experience to anybody, whatever your experience is. If you want to go to Hoodoos, you can go to Hoodoos. You want to go look at uh, fossils, you can go look at fossils. You can come up to the Bistai end and you can see these monstrous conifers, the KT boundary. So whatever they're interested in, it provides it. Sure. It's not just one experience. So the Bistai Dana Zen differs from each end, but they're both spectacular. They will both provide different experiences. Just all in the same area. Yes. That's the part to me that is just incredible about some of the things we've been talking about. It's just the different in the temperatures and things mm -hmm. in just in this region. Um, I love it. I love being able to try and picture what this used to look like and where we're standing right now, of course, was much taller at some point. Mm -hmm. We even pointed out a pond that existed mm -hmm. at one time over here and you're looking at it now and it looks like a hill. Yes. So you know, understanding the colors of the rocks and the grounds and yes. what those things represented. Represent. Yeah. Um, very cool, Sherry. Yeah, cool. It, we're, we're standing in a delta that, you know, conceivably is 65 million years old. And as, and as you go up past the KT boundary, well, then you get up into the 50 millions. And, and so in environments that were um, so different than what we have today. Right. They were not desert. They were a delta, a lot of vegetation, a lot of moisture, a lot of water, a lot of wildlife. Well, and you've said too that they've found alligator, mm -hmm. uh, fossils of alligators here. I mean, that's just incredible. And of course, over uh, in other parts, they're pulling dinosaurs yes. out of the ground. So, Gars, yeah, a lot of fish. A lot fossils. of fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it certainly speaks to the age and 
how much everything has changed and what you're looking at now is going to look very different yes. even a million years from yes, now. So absolutely. we've made it out about 1.7 miles is what we've gauged this at into the Bistai Dene, say it. Dana Zin. Dana Zin Wilderness and we have reached the log jam. Yes. And this is one of the most incredible places that I've ever seen. And standing right here behind us is a log that must be, I mean, over 30 feet, 40 feet, 50. I mean, it goes all the way down long, just huge. Mm -hmm. And this isn't even the biggest one just on the other side of this. And I know we'll have some footage out there that you can see. We're talking stumps 16 mm -hmm. feet wide. Mm -hmm. Sherry, this is amazing. Thank you for bringing us all the way out to this area, which we made a comment a second ago. It's very accessible. Very accessible. You know, the biggest issue, of course, is finding your way here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that um, that locals and people visiting here, they want to see us work on that. And yes. I know that's a BLM thing, but we want to work together, obviously, yes. with the BLM to try and promote this area. The log book, as you come in, your guest log book mm -hmm. there at the front of the trail is filled with people from France, Belgium, I mean, all across the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. who, and we talk, we said, well, how did they find us here? Yes. So how are they, how are they finding us here? I meet with a lot of them. I talk with a lot of people on the phone and it seems like the internet. Uh, if they're not associated with a, a travel group, um, they get on the internet, they're, they're interested in the four corners and what it has to provide. And, you know, you have Chaco, you have Mesa Verde, and then they see these, this wilderness area here in a semi-desert. And then they, they'll continue to Google and they see all these, these geologic features and structures and, and they just have to see it. And uh, that's pretty much how the, the, the people that come in from foreign countries, it's all done by internet. It's amazing. So we're working on continuing to promote that mm -hmm. and our CVB, of course, Tanya Stinson and her staff, they have told me repeatedly that the Bistai is the biggest attraction for folks traveling and yes. looking for areas here. But of course, they're coming to, to look at uh, Chaco Canyon mm -hmm. and Mesa Verde, um, those places. But let's go back to this log jam because mm -hmm. how does a log end up here in the middle of the desert? <laughs> in the middle of the desert. At, at the time that these logs were brought into this area, uh, recent research has come up with uh, a theory that the timing, uh, geologically, this is tied with the, the meter impact and the demise of the dinosaurs. This happened right after it. Uh, so you had a lot of um, earthquakes, uh, violent, violent, violent earthquakes and shifting. And so these conifers have been tracked all the way up into the Chuskas. Uh, and brought in in a violent storm associated with all the shifting and the, and the earthquakes. And it's amazing when you think the, how violent the storm had to be yeah. to, to carry these logs in. Well, to see where the sandstone is and how it all is, you know, what we're used to seeing sandstone, it's a very smooth, mm -hmm. solid formation. And right behind us here, I mean, we're talking the sandstone comes yes. this way and it comes this way. and. You know, this log here has another log that's jutting out from it on this side. And way over there is a log, I mean, probably the biggest tree I'd ever seen in my life. I mean, yeah, they're all pointing different directions. I mean, an incredible turbulent flow of, of just a mass of, of these big logs. But you had to have a, a violent enough storm with enough slope Power. and water. Yeah, the velocity had, yeah. had to be incredible. Yeah. And, and to have them all come down like matchsticks. In the sweet, yeah, like matchsticks. Yeah, and they're these monstrous conifers. Well, this has been a great adventure for us. And I, I just, you know, look out there at the audience and tell them, take the time, study up, find these places here. They're here local. When you have friends who come to town, um, what is there to do here in Farmington? Well, look, we have something like this that they can't find anywhere else yeah. in the world um, right here in the Four Corners USA. So This is the most unique wilderness um, for the geological features, the, the fossils, and you can come out here and it is so peaceful. Um, I love coming out here. I love bringing uh, people out uh, and that's what they comment. It is so beautiful around every bend it changes and you just recharge. Yeah. You know, you can, you don't have to, there's no trails to speak of. You just go in there wherever you want and see what you want. And it's, it's just a wonderful place.
and it's, and it's easily accessible. I think we may just uh, set up a tent here tonight and uh, <laughs> check out the sunset because I can tell you being out here considering places like Moab mm -hmm. uh, where you can just be amazed by that beauty this is one of those places that's a real treasure for us. Yes. So thank you for taking the time to bring you us bet. bring thank us you. out here and we're going to trek back so uh, we're going to continue the Jolter Journey series and there will be additional places that we're going to travel with Sherry too. But that's, uh, I think this is one of those that we'll always remember. So thanks, Sherry. Thank you.